Hi, my name's John. Welcome to a video that's a follow-on from last weekend's nightcap. In last weekend's nightcap, a friend of mine, Bob, came and he did some work on clock gauges, how he cleans them. Um, I asked if people wanted to see more Bob and the unanimous result, they wanted to see more Bob. So what this is, is a follow-on from that, a little bit more in depth. He strips down a DTI gauge, diagnoses a fault. And then in the next instalment or the next episode, he's going to repair it, uh, clean it, put it back together and make it work. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. I've had quite a few people ask if Bob does repair clock cages. Yes, he does. If you want to get in touch with Bob, you do it through me. Just send me an email and I'll pass Bob's email on here. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, I'm going to show you how to take date eyes apart. Now, they all come apart different. This, this particular model, uh, it's a John Bull, I don't know if it's, you'll probably say that hole. Underneath that hole lives three little screws. And you have to remove them three little screws to remove the bezel. Now don't just pull it off, because if you pull it off you'll pull the main hand off, or bend the main hand, because the main chapter ring is actually your push fit into the bezel. So that's that type. This particular type, it's a Mercer, it's held on by a retaining clip held in the, the back. Now, to get the retaining clip out, there's a little notch there. And what I use is a needle, a sewn needle, in that notch to lift the clip out to remove the bezel. But before you move it on this particular model, you have to remove the lens. And the easiest way to loop, loop, remove the lens is with a valve grinding tool, that's one of them with the rubber suckers on and you stick it on and give it a good hard yank and you remove the lens, because you need to remove the lens to take the hand off, because the bezel holds the dial if you try and remove the bezel with the, with the dial in, in place or the hand in place you should say, you'll end up pulling the hand off or bending the hand or even breaking the hand, so you have to remove the hand first then remove the clip and it'll come off there's a Mercer, a Mutter Toyo, sorry yo. now there's three types of how these is held on now on this particular type you've got these fingers, marking fingers for the, the, the needle on itself you set them where you want the maximum minimum where you want to go if you actually look at it, it's, it's split it's actually two C clips you remove them C clips then you remove the plastic lens, then there's a shroud, then you move the inner dial, the outer dial, the main dial, and you'll find two screws, which helps you take the movement out. All movements, or all the dainty eyes that I've done, come out through the front. They never ever come out through the back, they always come out through the front. The other way, what the Toyo hold the, the lenses in, instead of having these two silver rings if you want to call them that they have a plastic ring inside there's no gap in it so what again I use a small sewing needle to get in behind to lever that off to pull the lens out and again use a rubber sucker like on a valve grinder tool to remove the lens now on this Mercer um, there's no hole on the outside there's nothing what it is, it'll be very difficult to see, but I'll try and pinpoint them out. There's three slotted screw holes. One there, there's one down there, and there's one just behind the balance. So you take them screws, undo them screws, and there's fingers which I go into the dial. So you shove them back, and again you remove the main bezel. But again, you have to take the hands off. You don't take the hand off as I say in the main chapter ring is it just a push fit it's just a push fit into the, the the bezel but if you pull it you'll actually bend that hand right so we, we're going to have an attempt to repair this John Bull now the problem with it is it's not returning the needles going round but there's no sign of life of return that should come down yeah, well, to get it returned I've got to pull the spindle now the first now I don't bother with containers 
or tubs or anything like that to put the components into what I take off. All I do is work on zones. The reason I don't put stuff in, people say magnetic trays or anything that's like, first of all you want nothing magnetic because there's metal parts in and you'll magnetise them. Two, if you just put it like in a yoghurt pot or something, I'm a clumsy so-and-so, it's quite easy to knock that pot over and whatever's in the pot you've lost. So basically I just put whatever I take off into zones on my workbench, um, one particular place, and I start with the outside, work my way in overs. Any screws, take them all off, take them out. Now again, if you have a date yeah, and it works but it's missing the clamp what holds the bezel, put something in the screw hole, because that screw hole goes directly inside the movement. Any water, muck, dirt gets in that hole, it's going directly into the movement and you're going to have no chance, it's just going to grind away. Now, I always take the bat off, because it's easier, um, it lies, you can lie flat on the bench, so you know what you're doing. Now this is the first time I've had this bat off this clock, so I don't know what to expect. I'm expecting the main spring to be missing, to be honest, because it's not returning. But I don't know that till I get it open. No, there's the main spring. Now, looking at it, I don't know if that's the proper spring, but I don't know if John's camera can pick it up. But somebody's had it a bit because it's got excess oil going around there. Now, I've opened a few of these up, and people's had a go at it with a magic blue tin with a big wobbly one. Now, that stuff was originally developed as a dewatering agent, not as a lubricant. Everything it does after that is just a bonus. Now the only oil I recommend to use on the DTI is instrument maker's oil. Not clock oil, not watch oil, not engine oil, only instrument maker's oil. If you have to be pushed to shove, you can use 3 in 1 oil, just a little bit, not over excessive. If you oil it too much, it's just you might as well chuck it in a bucket of oil because it just gums everything up. So we know it's not the main spring. So I'll get me pointy nose pliers. I did have a pair of tweezers, I've got a pair of tweezers. Now most of the tools what we'll be using you'll already have in your workshop. Um little jeweler screwdrivers. Um Tweezers, pliers, big screwdrivers, hammers, you'll use all them sorts of things. Remove that guide block and remove the hinge, uh, spring. Right, so that will lie flat on the bench now. Now I've got to take these three little screws out, which are a pain. Now, again, if your screwdriver is too big, all you've got to do is damage that hole. So you want to make sure the screwdriver will fit in the hole without damaging it or hitting the sides. One out. Oh, I'm gonna fly. People say I wear glasses, yeah. But I still say them and I haven't got the glasses on. Three. Until fairly recently, um, DTIs are not well made to keep muck, dirt, grime out. Um, they've all got the. Uh, I'm just checking to make sure there's only three in, not four. Now, as I said before, don't go and pull the bezel off, slide it off. I mean, pain of pain. In this case, it does come off alright. 
remove the main chapter ring. Made this technique being used on Rolex watches, so my point of view is if it's alright for Rolex watches, it's alright for DTIs. But basically what you get is two pieces of wood either side of the dial, of the, the, the main needle you're going to take off. Get two reasonably sized screwdrivers. You've got something you're, you're not resting on the dial or the chapter ring, whatever you want to call it. You're actually resting on, in this case, two bits of plastic. You get the screwdrivers well underneath, put your finger on the top and lever up and you'll pull the dial off. You do exactly the same with the little hand. Put your finger over the top, you need to put something over the top or it'll just fly away and you lever it off. As you can see I've created a zone of everything what's come off of the outside and what little bits what's come off on the inside in one sector. So when I put it back together, that goes back together in that particular order. You ready? Pair tweezers, whatever, remove the bottom ring. Put that with the rest. Now as you can see we've got two screws. You need to take them two screws out to remove the movement. Get the appropriate fitting screwdriver. Now as I say, I have no idea what's wrong with this movement at all. I, I, my main suspicion was is that main spring was broken. Well it's not, so... Um, there is two springs in every DTI. One's very important, the other one's not so important. And I'll show you the important one. This is where everybody gets it wrong. You can see they're elongated holes, which you just twist. Now that's stuck in there firmly for some unknown reason. There's only two screws. Is it pinned? It might be pinned. Mm. Bit of a uh, you find the need to go on there. Well, it's the first time for everything. Oh, there's me. Mm. Now normally that would just should just have just come off. But I don't know why this one's been so uh, yeah, it's just been a, a tight fit. But as you can see well, John's camera can pick it up. Oil, excess oil. Might have to ease that because you need that to rotate so it engages onto the rack like so but it's been very tight now you notice on the rack there's a pin now some of these pins are screwed in some of these pins it's a push fit now I suspect on this one it's a push fit now I'm not at home, I'm at somebody else's workshop, but I have a little vice on my bench. What I, what I have, I have little bits of nylon block with holes in, it's virtually going to go all the way through. And I've got, and I'll put that over the hole on the nylon block to support the rack. And then I'll punch that out to remove the, the rack so you can clean it. But as it is, we'll leave it is because I'm not here. So, I'm going to have to take this moment a bit to say why it's not returning. I suspect it's just been over oiled. Okay, find the right screwdriver. Now, when I say these screws are small, they are small. And it doesn't take much to lose one if you're not very careful. Three screws. Again, they'll go up on a zone with the, the main part of the body. We'll just carefully lift the back off. 
and I can see the problem straight away. And that return spring is broken. That's a hair spring. That's the most important spring in the whole movement. <coughs> what that spring's for, if it was a watch or a clock, they will call that the balance spring. But it's not designed to be a balance spring. It's designed to put tension into the movement. So if there's any player on anything, it will take the player up, play out of the movement because it's always under tension because of that spring. So remove the cogs and sprockets as I call them, or wheels and pinions. Try to remember that I'm working in front of a camera and not directly. Well, it's not broken. It's pinned. There we go. Never come across one pin like that before. First time for everything he says. No, no, of John. John's camera can pick it up, but there's a little pin. There'll be a tapered pin there. When I first looked at it, I thought that the, the spring was broken because the way it was lying. But I think. What's happened is somebody's tried to overwound it or had it apart for some reason and it's actually jamming the movement or not returning the movement because it's all sorts of states. Pretty fiddly. Right, not going to come out with a pull. Right. I know what the problem is with this, unfortunately I'm not at my home workshop so I can't go any further, it wants this spring replacing. I've got spares of broken DTIs that I've been given, so this particular moment is as far as we go to go, I'm going to put it back in its box and I'll have to sort that down home and John will probably do a video of it all put back together, but that's the main problem, that little hair spring. If it's not right, the movement's not going to work right, the tension on the, on the movement's not going to be right and I think somewhat, well, by obviously by the look of it, somebody's had it to bits and they've literally knapped the spring because they don't know what they're doing 